everybody, thanks for joining. Hey, hey, Give me a couple hey. more minutes. <laughs> I gotta get on that soundboard action. Okay, cool. I think we can uh, kick it off. All right. Yeah. Do you uh, want me to start at any particular time, or? Yeah. So I'm, I'll just do a quick introduction for. I I can't hear you right now. By the way, I don't know if you're muted or something. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, that's a problem in my end. There we go. Let's try that. How's that? Can you hear me? Okay? Cool. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Cool. We're we're set up. Technical difficulties are out of the way. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. Uh, we're really excited. I, I'm really excited about this event uh, today. We're gonna we have Alex from Spyglass Labs, or some of you might know him as Blind Nabbler, and he's going to be talking about some really cool stuff uh, around substreams. And it's uh, called Hot Dogs, which uh, I'm loving the name. Uh, it's just you never know what's inside a hot dog, right? Um, so I'll let you get into that. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining today. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys' time. So without further ado, Alex, go ahead and take it away. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. And yeah, thanks for having me today. And I'm excited to talk about hot dogs this morning. Uh, so let me show my screen. I have a little bit of like a slideshow prepared. And uh, we can go from there. So... Uh, everyone see my screen all right? It's all good? Cool. Good to go. Um, all right, yeah. So uh, let's first go over some prerequisites. So like this talk is definitely aimed towards, towards uh, developers in the graph ecosystem. So the two requirements kind of are that you should know what a subgraph is, and you should also know what a substream is. Um, and if you guys take, you know, have some takeaways from this workshop, you should know what hot dog, you should know why hot dog, and you should also know how hot dogs enable us to supercharge the future, because they are a pretty cool piece of technology, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let's first cover the problem statement, because I think that like, yeah, good technology should definitely seek to solve a problem. So let's figure out why we even got here and why we need hot dogs in the first place. Um, but first, some context. So I'm a co-founder of a company called Spyglass Labs, and we are building no-code data analytics and visualizations that under the hood are all powered by the graph. There's our nice little landing page. Um, and so the goal we're shooting for is a decentralized playground that allows users to quickly and easily get the data they care about without sacrificing security or decentralization. Um, this is kind of like our, our core idea. And while doing so, we also want to provide the best user experience possible um, and just the most interactive and most intuitive experience uh, out there for any sort of data analytics platform. Um, and here we can see some examples and oh, look at that graph. So pretty and cool. Um, so before we got to kind of where we are today, let's go through like a brief history because I think it's important in talking about kind of some of the user experience stuff. So uh, before substreams came along, we had a no-code tool that was used to build and deploy subgraphs. And this was super cool for the time because there wasn't anything like it. However, it still wasn't the experience we wanted. Like, yes, you could build a subgraph and deploy a subgraph, but you didn't have any sort of real sense of like interactivity or anything. Um, and so it was kind of, uh, kind of a little bit of, of like a not, not great user experience. Um, especially if you wanted to change stuff, you had to resync the subgraph, which as you guys probably know, can be pretty slow. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to make some changes, it would take a while to resync, so we could do better. Um, so after substreams came out, we knew it was time to cook. Uh, so we went back into the kitchen and kind of like rewrote our whole uh, overall stack. So instead of using subgraphs under the hood, we rewrote all of our code generation stuff to work with substreams. And so this was really nice because assembly script code can be really gnarly to work with. And so writing a compiler that compiles to assembly script can be super gnarly. Um, Rust is much less gnarly. Um, and so we kind of used Rust macro system to allow us to generate Rust code that was super straightforward and pretty easy to understand. Um, so like here's some example code to get all the transfer events for the Milady contract. So you know we pass in transfers, um, we pass in a module output type, single output type, as well as a input event type, um, and then the contract address. And this will, in turn, create a substreams module that's a map, and it will grab and decode all the data we care about. 
Um, so that's definitely like a step in the right direction because this is very flexible. So we can you know do a lot of code gen on the fly and and make it all very easy to work with. Um, but there's still an issue, and that's that we're fundamentally changing the Rust code, which means that we need to recompile and package this new uh, WASM binary. And then we need to also pack this into an S package and then eventually ship this S package over to a Substream's backend. Um, so that was just like a slow process because compilation, depending on your machine specs, can take a while. And if you're using like a virtual machine, let's say, you know, conservatively, it took about like 35 seconds or 30 seconds to, to build these this WASM binary. And um, if I want to go interact with some data and I have to wait 30 seconds for that, that's really not a great user experience. So again, we were kind of like, how can we improve this and how can we make this better? Um, and so, yeah, we, we kept cooking. I guess also there is the side note there as well is that um, because we were also creating these new substream modules um, is that we couldn't benefit from mod substreams module caching where um, after a substreams uh, or, or after a firehose provider has indexed or I guess run a substreams uh, module calculation for a block, uh, it can cache that output because substreams are deterministic. Um, anyway, so we went back to the drawing board. Um, and so we were made aware of a new feature in substreams that were called module params. And so these are strings that can be defined at runtime and they're passed into substreams modules and used within the code. And so this really was a game changer for us because now all of a sudden, not only can our substreams modules read from the source blocks, so they, they can read from you know, Ethereum blocks and stuff like that, as well as other map modules, but we can actually also pass in an arbitrary string. And so this does not require any compilation. This doesn't require any sort of, um, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't require us to, to change any of the fundamental Rust code because it's just something we define at runtime. And so it solves this issue of having to do compilation. Um, and it also allows us to do some really flexible and powerful things that um, would be quite painful to do otherwise. And so, this is kind of like uh, an example way that we could define a, a module with uh, the inputs of params. And so, you know, we give it a name, we give it a kind, and within our inputs, we just define this, this params string here. Um, and so, yeah, so we have substreams modules now that can take arbitrary strings at runtime. So like this ability that I was planning on building was a generalized event parsing module. And so what did this module ideally seek to do? So I was trying to get, have a, um, a, a single substream module, so a single block of WASM code that could process an Ethereum block and decode the event data depending on what I put in. So if I was interested in NFT trades, and let's say I was tracking the Milady contract address, I could pass in the specific structure of the transfer event and the Milady address, and then I could get those transfers. Um, so that, that, that sounds really awesome. That sounds super powerful. But there's a problem, and if we go to try and define the module definition in the YAML, we can see that problem. So we know that we're trying to define a map events module, and we know it's going to have an input of a string, and it's also going to have an input of an Ethereum source block. Um, however, what does this output? because we are trying to have a very flexible substreams module, but flexibility and static typing doesn't work super great as far as uh, protobufs are concerned, because every substream module has to have a specified input type, or I guess a bunch of inputs, and it has to have one fixed output type. Um, and so if we wanna have really flexible substreams modules, how are we going to effectively um, work with these, with, with, you know, output? Like, what, what is it going to output? Um, yeah, so, you know, how can we define a constant output type for something that we don't know what it looks like until we run it? Because if I am indexing an NFT contract, I'm going to be worried about transfer events or approval events, which all look a certain way. Or if I'm interested in the Blur uh, NFT marketplace contract, that has very different events. Um, and so therefore, the output type should look very, very different. Um, so I don't know what it says about us as a bunch of developers. But when we were thinking about something which we don't really know what's inside, but we know how to consume it, uh, first thing that came to our mind was hot dogs. 
look at this image of a hot dog. Uh, you know the shape of it, right? You know, it's like a tube of meat sealed with something. But what's really inside? Is it possum? Is it beef? Is it pork? You know, you, you don't really know until you rip it open and find out for yourself or bite into it. Um, and so that this has a lot of similarities with our flexible event parsing module. And so that's why we get the name hot dogs is because it's kind of funny. Um, and it all, also does pretty accurately describe how we should be um, working or like, you know, I guess how we are going to be working with these flexible types. So, you know, under the hood, this is what a hot dog looks like in, in protobufs or like within the protobuf definition. So it's a protobuf message that has a name that we call hot dog name, um, as well as a hash map of strings to a number of possible values. So we have this key value store and it's, you know, any of these possible values. And um, that's, you know, that's all, that's all fine and dandy, but let's look at some hot dogs in action. So we'll pop on over the code. Uh, but before I do that, does anyone have any questions at all before I start diving into the code? Does that all make sense to everyone about how we kind of got to hot dogs in the problem statement there? Okay, cool. Um, so let me share my screen again. Um, and so also for reference, all of this is available, like all of this code for the hot dog stuff is all open source and also available through a literate programming document um, in here. And so I can send the link to the, that right now. Actually, I don't know, uh, Kevin, am I allowed to send links or is that like restricted? Um, if people want uh, to check out this screenshot. You should be able to send the link. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, let's see. Um, so yeah, here is the module repo for all this hot dog stuff. Uh, and you guys can follow along if you want, but we have this literate.org document, which actually contains all of the source code for hot dogs and all the stuff that we're working with, as well as documentation for like, you know, why we're doing things, stuff like that. So you can follow along here. Um, but let's enough of like, you know, looking at that, let's actually look at the definition for this map events module. So we wanted a way to be able to work with events and um, this is how we do it. So uh, can everyone see this okay? Here, I'll, that looks a little bit better. Um, so yeah, we specify that this module takes in a parameter of the form, the contract address separated by uh, two ampersands as well as the contract ABI. And we send these into strings because everything is just strings. We can do some really cool stuff here. So uh, yeah, we can also repeat this. So the map events module is very flexible. It can take multiple ABIs in as well as multiple contract addresses. And it will process all of these within a single, um, it will process all these within a, a single module, which is really cool because within one single blob of Wasm code, we can process every possible uh, you know, event on the Ethereum blockchain and do this, you know, at, at a very, very good scale. So um, let's just step through this code piecewise. So uh, we, you know, we define this public function. Uh, we give it this attribute macro of uh, make it, that makes it a map. And it takes in a param string as well as a block, which is an Ethereum block. And it's going to return a result type of hot dogs or a substream error. So First off, we're just going to parse the string. So we're going to split the string along these double ampersands, which is what our pattern that we defined up, you know, 12 lines above here is. Um, and then, you know, if it's not evenly divisible, we know that there's going to be some problem there because every address needs an ABI to go along with it with the way that we have this written. So, um, yeah, then we're just going to process this. So the contract info is a hash map from an address to an Ethereum ABI. And basically what we're doing here is we are just iterating over our split array here. So our split input string. And we know that the odd indexes are going to be addresses and the even indexes are going to be uh, ABIs. So we're saying if it's you know divisible by two, just continue. Otherwise, we know that the address should be the previous index if we're on um, these, uh, these even indexes. Um, we know the ABI JSON which is the string representation of the Ethereum API we're working with, is going to be the current item. And we can actually, because this is all Rust, we can use Serde, which is a serialization library, to decode a um, Ethereum API 
from our string here. So this is what we're doing here. We are decoding the ABI and then we're storing it in this contract info uh, hash map uh, right up here. Um, and so, yeah, this is just kind of like the whole processing thing. So between this whole uh, structure of code here, we are just splitting, we're, we're just parsing the input string. So we're getting all the addresses that we care about and we're getting all the uh, ABIs that we care about. And then from there, we are um, just storing them in a hash map within our module. Um, and so then from here, we just grab the block hash, block number, block timestamp. Um, and then we're just gonna find all these hot dogs, which are, uh, we have some helper functions that we defined here to basically go from an Ethereum event log to grab the emitting address. Um, and then we are going to you know, decode the, um, we're gonna find basically whether or not we have an ABI stored for this address here. Um, and if we do, we are going to convert this event log given, um, we're gonna dec decode the event log according to one of the types that we defined. Um, and we're gonna convert this into a hot dog. And then finally, this module returns a hot dog or a, a bunch of hot dogs, I guess. Um, and this is like pretty straightforward code given how much flexibility we have. Um, because again, this can decode anything and we have to do zero compilation and it will return hot dogs and it's super flexible and cool. Um, and so I'll go ahead and share kind of some practical usage of this. So on our uh, app here, I'm just gonna Pull this up real quick. Um, we can see something here. Um, and we, we can see an example. And the reason why we're doing this is just because it's very easy. So if I want to see all the transfer events for the Milady contract, I can just pop open this thing. And we can see instantly that it starts streaming all this data from the substream. And these are all hot dogs. So we can see the hot dog name here. We can see the gas price. We can see the two address. We can see all these things. Um, and yeah, this is all being done at runtime. There's no compilation required, and this will work for any Ethereum ABI that you put in and any contract address that you put in. Um, so that's 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 very cool. Um, and let's see here. So that's the map events module. Um, and I guess hmm, I, I, I was kind of just planning on showing off a lot of these modules. However, um, Maybe I should, yeah, I, I, yeah, we'll uh, do a little bit, a little bit more here. So, um, because we have kind of this very dynamic structure, we have a lot of modules which are kind of all hooked up. So, um, depending on what we're interested in, again, we can do some cool stuff such as filtering out blur trades from a specific address. Um, so, again, if we're interested in, let's say, the Milady's NFT address we can use another module, which we defined here called the blur trades module. And this module will allow us to paste in a contract address, again, separated by two ampersands. Um, and it will grab all of the blur trades for that particular um, address here. And so we have this done in three modules, which first grabs all the blur trades and then filters it out based on an address. And then finally, we have another uh, blur or another module which will output a specific type kind of of hot dogs that we call the NFT price one, and uh, I can I can show off kind of why that's nice here. But so this is uh, example data here again, all all streamed in real time from the past. I guess this is the past three months. Hey, Alex, and this real, is real quick. Sorry oh, to interrupt you. Sorry. Uh, when yeah. You're when you're streaming all this data, I think your internet connection is kind of dropping. So a lot of this. Oh. So what I was saying, uh, is okay. maybe you could like pause the stream if possible, or uh, yeah, try to just make it a little bigger. Yeah, sure, I, absolutely. Sorry about that. Sorry. Is that uh, is that better? Looks a lot. Looks a little better. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Here, I can also just get rid of a lot of these. Let me get rid of the uh, transaction metadata here. And yeah, that's that's fine there. Um, and so, yeah, again, this is all, all dynamic. We just paste in a contract address and we are able to work with all these blur trades. And so, for instance, if we want to visualize, you know, the, the, the price of these sorts of things, we can group by like token ID and we can make the Y axis be like the price and ETH and then the X axis be token ID or something. And so we can order this and we can see kind of what the, 
Actually, that's not the price of ETH. Let's get like, the, uh, I don't know. I, I actually kind of just broke this right right before uh, demo in here. But we can create uh, kind of, we can interact with this data very easily. So um, honestly, that's probably where we can leave off if we can switch it over to the Q&A stuff now, if anyone has any questions over, you know, how to use these and yeah. Um, I had a question. So in regards to the, uh, <clears throat> like the Spyglass Labs app that you guys have, I mean, that's all real-time streaming data, right? So you can uh, yeah. essentially almost like, well, you're subscribing to that data and you're, you're able to update the visualization in real time. Can you like watch the stream and then have the dashboard kind of like update? Uh, yeah, that's actually how that works. Uh, that was just a, a pre-synced uh, thing that I had prepared for the demo, but like, yeah, you, you can watch the dashboards update by just looking at stuff. So let's use another module, which is like the Etherscan overview module, which showcases what methods people are using on a, on a contract. So you can see that the data is indeed streaming in. You can see these rows are updating and people are doing different things. So we can see you know, a lot of people are using the set approval for all and the transfer from events. Um, and yeah, all this stuff is being decoded from here. Yeah. Your screen's actually black for me. Uh, yeah, I think it is for oh. someone else. I think your internet connection is like oh. a little ha hampered because of the, uh, uh, you know, you're streaming so much data. <laughs> it was. It, I think it was actually because I was. Um, it it might have been that. Oh, also, I think I was just there sharing the wrong screen. That's, um, that's sorry. Let, let me clearer. let me restart. Let me restart the stream though. Uh, so yeah, we can start the stream to see what methods people are calling on the contract. So we call this module the Etherscan mm -hmm. Overview which is meant to mimic a lot of the um, functionality that you get from like, you know, pulling up Etherscan for a contract. So you can read kind of what kind of uh, methods people are calling and when they're calling them, et cetera. So similar to kind of this page is where we're creating this sort of functionality within a single subterms module that's all customized at runtime. Um, the all this data flows in as, as the substream starts emitting stuff. Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, that's, de that's definitely what I was wondering. Yeah, it's really cool. Cool. I have a question. Uh, so as far as I understand, you're basically parsing the ABI like on every block, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is kind of the downside of working with um, hot dogs is that they are not the most performant thing. However, I don't think this is a problem directly. Um, I think that for what hot dogs should be used for, which is rapid prototyping and experimentation, we can deal with a slower slower processing speed because, yeah, the way Substreams does work is I, I believe, it's my understanding, is that because we're passing in this param, every block we are parsing this JSON string as uh, an Ethereum API. However, I have noticed it's not horrifically slow. It's actually still very, very fast, it feels like, when I'm using it, so... Do, do you know like what's the overhead? Like what we're talking about here? Like how many percent? No, I, I have no clue what the overhead is like. We haven't run any like heat maps on it or or anything. So we're going to be doing that eventually here, but we just haven't haven't done anything yet because this is all relatively new. I think that we first had the idea like a month and a half ago, and so we've been playing with it ever since. Yeah, yeah it's really cool. It would be interesting to to learn like how how heavy it is. But on the on the on the bright side, like. Uh, uh, it only happens like once, like the first time you run, right? So because it ca it caches all the data on the back end. So the yep. second time somebody streams it, it doesn't do anything. It just reads the the files and just streams to you. So it's really just like first time you run it. It's heavy on the on the back end, but uh, and yeah, subsequent uh, uh, runs it it should be much better. Yeah, yeah, totally, and. Um... Yeah, actually, that, that's a good point. Actually, I, I didn't even think, think about that directly, but I wonder how that does impact performance kind of in the long run. Because like, ideally, you would want to reuse all these different modules. And so maybe it's actually totally fine. Um, maybe the performance hit isn't too bad if, yeah, it's only heavy on the first time. So that's a really good point. Thanks for bringing it up. Any other questions? Or anyone want, want me to like showcase any other parts of our code base or explain anything? So.
Well, we do have some extra time. So if there's something you wanted to show off or something you had in mind, that's, I think that's hundred percent. Okay. Um, cool. but if you're done, if you're done, that's cool too. Uh, I'll kind of leave it up to you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I actually, yeah, there's a couple interesting things here. Um, so I guess like kind of show of virtual discord hands, like how many people are like substreams developers here and are like familiar with rust? Probably a mixed right. crowd. Probably a little bit. Yeah. Of, a little bit of both, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, this is. Uh, yeah, I can. I can just show off some some other kind of interesting modules that we have, and um, just just do a little speedrun overview. So these are kind of all the modules that we have defined in our module repo. Um, is this by the way? Everyone see my screen? All good. Yep. Good. Cool. Um, so yeah, we have this map events module. We have this filter events module, which takes the map events module's input. And so it allows us to filter out what events we're actually interested in because the map events module will event or emit every type of transfer or every type of event which an ABI contains. So we use the filter events module to then kind of filter this down to if we just want to display, you know, the transfer events or something else on our, on our interface um, or within your substream. So uh, yeah, then we have some other, so these are kind of all NFT modules. So we have like an NFT trades module, which will display a fixed price um, representation of, of the seaport trades and blur trades. Um, there's also some interesting stuff here. So <clears throat> we have a graph out module. And so this, for those of you who don't know, the graph out module is the module in which a substream can dump all of its changes into a subgraph. So when we are converting stuff from an Ethereum block into you know, the events that we care about, and then we want to push these changes into a subgraph, we need to tell Postgres what tables to update and how to update these things. And so we know what tables that we need to update because we have like the names of these different hot dogs and we have the names of these different event types. So we can actually do generalized substream powered subgraphs, which just take in an Ethereum ABI and an address, which means that you know no one has to write any code in theory for this because they can just dump in their ABI and um, Ethereum address and it'll start indexing all the data there with all the power of substreams as opposed to traditional RPC based indexing. So this is kind of like the equivalent of running graph in it and then just like deploying immediately for those of you who have used the, um, the CLI uh, for that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, besides that, we have some other cool modules which people can play around with, such as like ownership distribution. So you can see who owns what percentage of an NFT collection. Uh, you can count how many unique users have interacted with the contract. And this contains three sub modules, which is actually how we do that. Um, then, yeah, you can also see how much gas each contract is using um, in general. Uh, so this like is running all of the code for um, seeing like how, what contracts are using the most gas. Again, this is mimicking kind of the ether scan functionality because that's kind of a useful metric here is, you know, we can see uh, wherever that dashboard was, but they have some gas overview and we're trying to reach parity with stuff like this. So a lot of our modules such as the Etherscan overview and gas guzzlers are inspired by other good sources of data. But again, these are highly composable and reusable modules as opposed to somebody writing some you know, API on their centralized server. So everyone can benefit from these and use them however they want. Um, and again, they're all using hot dogs because that's just a very nice flexible type. So. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly really all I have to show off. Uh, if people have any questions over what, you know, how to use this or they want any help using it themselves, anyone is happy to, I'm, I'm happy to help anyone if you guys have any questions or, um, you know, want help integrating these sort of substreams or want to play with our application. Like Jordan said, we have a nice release coming out next week. So stay tuned. But that's kind of all I have to show off. So, yeah. Great. Really cool if I, oh, sorry, go for it. No, you go first. I was going to ask if uh, once questions are done, um, probably have a quick V2 sneak peek. 
And, uh, but let's do questions first, if there's time. Cool, I like that, some alpha. <laughs> yeah, uh, always. So uh, where, where should uh, people go to, I guess, get involved with the hot dog stuff? I mean, where's the best way to, to chat about this stuff? Is it in Discord or, um, you know, where, where should they reach out to you? Yeah, you guys can reach out to me on Discord. We also have, um, I also have Twitter as well, or, or Telegram. Um, I think all those things should be listed. I don't know, you might be able to find them on my Discord. But yeah, Discord's probably the easiest if you guys just want to add me and reach out. Um, I'd be happy to happy to help answer any questions that you guys have about any of this hot dog stuff. And then I guess also our website, I'm going to drop in the chat as uh, spygpc.com. But um, like Jordan said, we have a nice release coming out next week that will kind of really add some serious superpowers to what we're working with. So. And do you have um, that SP SPKG file published somewhere that, that, that we yeah. can like, use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. GitHub? It's, it's here. Um, I actually need to push up latest, but... Goose, while you're, while you're trying to find that, I'm just going to go show folks a quick sneak peek of what we're working on and kind of show the uh, direction of where we want to take the uh, product. Also, I, I don't know if I cut out there, but I just sent the S package link in the chat. It's in the, it's in the GitHub. So I, I'll, I'll push latest up, so that might not actually be the latest version. I don't remember. Um, but I'll, I'll ping you, uh, Yaro, when you, or when I push it up. Yeah, maybe if you can just like push it to the releases um, on your GitHub, so anyone can link to it. Cool, sounds good. We'll do. Yeah, we, definitely. Some of these, um, we've got some great feedback over the last three weeks over what we've built at Spyglass. Um, we're expanding the concept a little bit to support arbitrary substreams. Um, we know that there's work on a decentralized substream registry, and we are keen to kind of build the scaffolding around that such that anyone can upload, download, share substreams. Uh, for example, here, we have a list of all these substreams I've been playing around with and uploading. If I click this, we're able to see an arbitrary like a data flow graph of the substream, kind of show the, uh, the DAG. You can inspect individual map modules, see the protobufs right here. Um, we're working on a CLI guide so folks can stream this locally or just download if they want to. Um, but coolest of all is that we took a cue from Dune and pretty much we're supporting arbitrary number of visualizations um, where you can kind of modify. You see a data grid over here, convert that to a sunburst map, group by the gas price reorder. Um, so kind of just quality of life, visualization functionality, all powered by substreams. Uh, this is all powered by a particular map module within a substream, but you can kind of choose whatever map module. And this is the hot dog magic here. We can actually enter params to um, change the data being streamed from the substream. Um, shout out to Pinex. We are using their uh, very fast endpoint to power all this right now. So thank you kindly. Um, but yeah, this is probably what we wanted to do was build arbitrary substreams that consume arbitrary data. Namely, you know, if you want all the Unis if you're looking at particular Uniswap pools, why not pass in an array of Uniswap pool addresses? If you care about watching, you know, 55 centralized exchanges, that's also a hot dog. That's a param module. Um, so just extending the concept of feeding kind of rich data structures to substreams, parsing it and visualizing it in a beautiful manner, letting anyone stream it or like see the data flow. Uh, that's what we're going for. Um, so this is all Goose, credit to Goose for spiking this. He uh, came up with the idea of hot dogs and the name stuck. Um, I was uncertain at first, but it just kept on growing on me. And um, yeah, please check this out in about one week. And if you'd like a beta access, we need beta testers. So hit either of us up and we're happy to share our work. 
Is it going to be on spygpc.com? Yep, yep. So this is the localhost port 3000. And we've been very busy for the past month. <laughs> oh. New version coming up, coming up soon. This stuff is like so amazing. And I, I really like the fact that you're thinking about reuse and allowing other people to build on what you've got. So this is, uh, this is amazing. Yeah, thank you. Well, like this is level one uh, where like folks can just like actually view the data and stream it either locally or like um, through a visualization tool. V2 is extending this editor to start merging multiple substreams together and adding custom syncs and outputs with a DAG. So we're cruising, we're cruising. Um, but that's, that's gonna be the next launch. Right now we're just trying to get this out. Good yeah, it's really exciting. It's, uh, yeah, the, the whole kind of concept of um, substreams and how powerful they are really makes me excited because hopefully we can build some really cool technology that allows decentralized APIs to become the standard and have so many benefits such as composability and cached outputs so you can sync super quickly. Um, and so, yeah, we're kind of all helping each other index all the data that we care about um, much better than the centralized providers can. So, yeah, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Cool. Stop sharing. I've Great. got nothing else uh, to say. Yeah, th thank no, you. thank you. That, that was really awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Um, any other questions uh, for the Spyglass team that uh, you guys had? So uh, I guess question, this is all on Ethereum right now, or you're supporting other chains? Can we test on Sepolia or Gorly or Polygon or? Every endpoint that you, you feed us, we will happily support on Firehose. All right. There we yeah, go. Yeah, I guess it has to be Ethereum based um, because otherwise it will not be able yeah, to. Yeah, it part. doesn't make sense on Airweave, I guess. EVM based chains. Cool, cool, cool. Well, <laughs> more <laughs> blockchains, more firehose, more substreams coming soon. So lots <laughs> of. Uh, people working on that in the graph community. Great, thank you so much, everyone. Um, does anyone else have anything they wanted to bring up um, around around subgraphs, the graph, or anything that you guys wanted to share? Um, this is a good, good time to reach other builders. Um, anyone have anything else they wanted to add? Great, okay, cool. And we're also looking for some feedback on these sessions. Uh, we're trying to improve these and make them um, you know, as valuable as they can be for the uh, Graph Builders community. So if you guys have feedback, you guys can reach out to me individually. Um, uh, I'd love to hear you know, how we can make these sessions better. Um, I think we've had really good speakers and um, I'm really excited for the next few sessions that we have coming up. Uh, next week, we have Chris from Edge and Node. He's gonna be talking about Graph Client. So be sure to add that to your uh, calendar. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, keep you guys, uh, you know, um, uh, with some content that's uh, relevant. Any other questions you guys have? Cool. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for coming today. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for coming. And thanks for, yeah, letting us get up here and talk about hot dogs. It's a great start to the morning. <laughs> hot dogs. I'm going to go have a hot dog. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm gonna have a hot dog for breakfast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. All right. Thanks, See you guys. guys. Bye. Bye.